Good morning, everybody. Apologize for being a little late. I, I have no excuses. I was just kind of lost in thought and typing away, trying to figure out what to do with the markets this morning and completely lost track of time. Uh, my wife calls me oblivious uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, you know, that's one of the gifts of the mail. You get tunnel vision. You can totally focus on something to the exclusion of everything else. And that's where I was this morning. So uh, well, thank you, Neil. I'm glad I'm uh, still uh, above uh, ground temperature, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Probably not much wine for me anyway uh, this weekend. The, uh, but I, I got a couple of bottles that I, I need to sample. You know, when you uh, get a hobby in wine tasting, you get all sorts of people that call you up all the time. And uh, I end up buying a hell of a lot more wine than I drink. So it's fun to give it away, though. Uh, here we are. It is Friday. This is the end of the week. Uh, we've had one hell of a run up. Uh, so profit taking is one dynamic we're going to have to deal with. Uh, the options market. Uh, the play in the 10-year is 125 and a half, 126. Pretty tight market right now. Um, the uh, news today can impact the trading. The news, if as forecast, uh, is not positive for uh, the financials. It would be positive for the stock market. So they got starts or expected to be greater than they were last month at 980. Permits at 1.02. Uh, and then Michigan sentiment, which is probably because of the height of the stock market when the survey was taken, is probably going to hit its 84.5. Michigan sentiment, when you get right down to it, is so tied to the direction of the stock market uh, that it's hard to uh, put it any other place than that. So the e minis reaction to the news, uh, the direction of the e mini uh, is certainly going to be a factor this morning. And the e mini today is options expiration. Now the um, Large institutions that use options for their particular strategies probably were out of their positions on Wednesday. So right now we've got the option market makers versus the sharks, and the sharks would have to be considered those five firms uh, considered too big to fail, plus he other hedge funds. And um, the play in options yesterday was 18.55 to 75. So we, if the market can't take out 1855 this morning, um, 1860, uh, then it's got a chance to go up there and probe that 70, 75 area. And that would impact the trading first. So I think the easiest trade to call is just can't get through uh, 126 even, 126.04, the same as it was last night. So selling failure in this area looks reasonable. Then 7 to 11. On the um, buy side, I think we can go a little bit lower. And what I'm what I'm keying off of right here is that the market needs volume, right here. So the bottom part of this is this 23.21 area. So I'd like to buy 17s to 21. I'm pretty very comfortable with that trade, but it may take 25s to get in, depending on the news. Now, the market, the equity players really, really want to see. Uh, an increase in the housing sector numbers because the housing s sector was supposed to improve a great deal this year and it was the number two leg of the Fed's forecast. So uh, if we get an improvement in these uh, housing numbers right here, uh, then you can make the case that perhaps the second quarter is coming back by stocks. Uh, so that's where we are on the note this morning. I, I think, again, the easiest trade to see is uh, selling failure uh, to take out the buck.
Um, I'm going to, like I said, on the uh, buy 17 to 21, but it, it, it actually might be 21 to 25. We'll just have to see how she plays out. Okay, the play on um, the 30-year um, this morning was... Uh, Yesterday was 135s and 139s, which is quite a spread as it normally is. Uh, but I don't, I don't see any way we could reach 139 this morning without um, uh, some big help from the housing numbers and continued selling in the uh, e-mini due to lousy housing numbers. So... We're knocking on uh, 138. The uh, put play is 135. That makes sense. Option expiration is until next week. Uh, probably why uh, the 139 number. Uh, lots of action in, in the 138 calls, too. So, uh, again, it, it's like yesterday we left wanting a sell failure to take out 28 to the buck. I think that's a reasonable trade uh, again. So 27 to 31, sell one. 3 to 7, sell two. Uh, again, we have this volume that's all the way down to here. So uh, the top part of this band starts at 8. Uh, the bottom part of the band at 137. Uh, then we've got to get through in the low volume number. Let's see, is it 3709? 37.14. So given the strength in the knob spread, um, hopefully we can go a little lower. We'll try 9s to 13s, but it may take 17s to get in. The buy might be 13 to 17. So we'll start out cheap because of the news forecast to be as strong as it is. Um, but we'll have to adjust that after the news. And the reason I, again, the reason that uh, I have uh, the numbers set a little bit lower is that the news is forecast, if as forecast, would be negative for the uh, financials. Okay, gold held up pretty well last night. Um, the low end of the market did not break. Uh, so we've got a buyer 85 to 90. 90 plus, and uh, we definitely have a seller above 1305. Uh, a deadline was given by the Rebels, and and again, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Donets, Donets, Donets. I don't know. Uh, for the Ukraine to get out of their own country <laughs> by this weekend, so uh, we have enough unrest right there that uh, that probably will keep gold from breaking so 9092 by one thanks Fitz and then 8587 for buy two on the uh, sell side resistance is the buck so 98 to the buck will be sell one two to five will be sell two and we'll see how gold plays that. You know, probably have ourselves a uh, fairly quiet trading range today in gold. Famous last words, right? With okay, interesting article in... Um, Zero Hedge, and I, I don't think Zero Hedge has any um, illusions about government regulatory agencies, central banks and stuff lying to you when it suits their purposes. Uh, but one of their articles was caught Draghi in a big lie. Uh, so you know, that old standard joke, when, you, when can you tell a politician is lying, his lips are moving. Uh, that has become so true here. Uh, over these last four or five years, I mean. Then again, that's what makes the profile so strong. You don't have to know who, you don't have to know why, you can just see that they are. 
so we got really, really good support down here against this high volume number at 32. So 25 to the buck is buy one. Again, I think things between Ukraine and Russia will keep this market from selling. And then we'll make 75 to the buck buy two. Um, I don't have any trouble getting short 102, 102 and a quarter. Just kind of see a uh, trading range today, then 250, 275. Uh, as far as crude goes. Okay, to the euro. Um, the euro, uh, the uh, trading on the continent, uh, you have probably the most technical traders in the world out of Germany. Uh, you have the uh, dog uh, is centered in um, England, London. It's the uh, <clears throat> center of the currency markets. So <clears throat> we're the tail. Uh, we react to what goes on in Europe. We talked about yesterday this 25 to 50 area was really, really good resistance. And you can see it right here. <clears throat> and when we left yesterday's markets, uh, we wanted to sell 20s to 30s. Damn good, Charlie. Where do you get those calls from? And when you look at the structure right here, it's pretty easy to make that call. We had rejection right here. Uh, 25 is a round number. Thought we'd come in below 25, see if 25 could hold, and 25 did hold. Uh, on the buy side, yesterday we were looking at basically the buck, uh, and it went through it, and our second buy zone was 75 plus or minus, so we didn't quite get to our second buy zone. So we've got uh, buyers 75 to 85 end of the week. I think that would probably be a pretty good area to get long, and then our 50 to 60. We break that. And on the sell side, we've got volume at 16. Uh, the spill was from 10. We're currently at 99, so we'll make 5 to 15, sell 1, and 25 to 35, sell 2. In 37, the, the play for 05 is just let them get stops above that. 15 is kind of one of those breaks in the market. 25 was resistance last night. 35 would allow them to get stops above that if we can get there. I don't see anything that makes the euro take off today. Uh, uh, if our housing numbers are stronger than forecast, it should come down into our buy zone. Okay, the E-mini is, um, is an interesting play today. Uh, we normally uh, expect um, a pause day after a trend day. And we have news in the forecast that if, as forecast, uh, would support uh, the indexes. Uh, we've got Pretty strong case for 55, 57 is support. Yesterday's low was 59. Uh, we have those single prints uh, at 70, uh, which held the market in the overnight session. So we've got resistance basically at 70 plus or minus than 75. So 70, 75 is resistance. And if we can stay below 75, the selling could accelerate. Um, the proverbial bull, the guy that's always bullish, is Ralph Wood Appenkara. He used to be with Prubash a long time ago. And um, he's turned very, very concerned about the market. I think a lot of people are concerned about the market. I mean, it's <clears throat> once you get past the headlines and the smoothing it takes to get to that, we don't have a strong economy um, outside of automobiles. And they're making so damn many deals to sell automobiles right now. I mean, 15% discounts off of a sticker price are not the rule, but you can find 
keeping them, <clears throat> especially if the car is loaded up on goodies. So we got resistance 68 to 70. Uh, that's going to be our first sell band. Uh, then the trade 74, 76 will be S2. Uh, the sell is just, I mean, it's where resistance is right now, period. On the buy side, uh, we've got uh, 59.61, letting them test yesterday's low for buy one. I think we got a pause day coming, and then 55.57 is where I like it. But they're really looking for 980 on starts. That is a friendly number for equities, and then 1.02 million for permits. That's a friendly number for equities, and 84.5 for Michigan sentiment. So. I think the biggest thing we have going for us today is pause day after a trend day and then options expiration. And yesterday's biggest play on options were 75, 80 calls, and 50, 55 on the uh, put side. So this 55 is probably pretty pretty decent support. So 55, 60 is where I've got support this morning. Good chance for it to hold on that first test. And then 70, which won't be too difficult to take out. So I've got 75 plus or minus probably is the best resistance. And we'll play for that. So um, the short started early in X period. Now we got to take out the overnight low and then yesterday's lows to stick with the positions. And if we can't do that, getting long to maybe test 75, uh, I think is probably the trade for the day. So we're playing for a pause day, all things considered. Um, if we can't get through the 68-70 area right here, uh, the sentiment is decidedly bearish. Okay, it'll take at least 15 minutes, probably 20 to get everything up. Uh, let's get after it. We've got news. I'll update after the news. In the meantime, good trading.